Greetings and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Working with Transport Rules and Data Loss Prevention. In this lesson, we're going to focus on transport rules and DLP policies. Transport rules can help to apply important actions to email as it flows through your organization. For example, adding a disclaimer. In the event you need to ensure a disclaimer is added to all email, the best way to do this is not to trust the end user to apply that disclaimer to their email. Even if they set up a signature with that disclaimer, there will always be some who forget to apply the disclaimer to their signature or who forget to apply a signature or reply to emails to the outside world and perhaps don't use their signature. So trusting the end user for something so important is probably not your best solution. Instead, it's better to use a transport rule which will apply to all emails without the need for human intervention. Data Loss Prevention, DLP, these are policies that can be established that can scan email messages for sensitive information that may be subject to certain regulations or business policies. We have much to cover, so let's get started. A transport rule is really made up of three different items, a condition, an action, and possibly an exception. Now it's good to note that you can have more than one condition and more than one action and that exceptions are optional. So a good example of a transport rule might be that the head of a department wants a copy of all emails sent to his department also sent to him. Can you do that? Yes, you can do that. You can set up a rule with the condition that if mail is sent to a group made up of all persons in that department, a copy will be sent to the department head. So the condition is that email is going to that group. The action is that a copy will be sent to the department head. In this case, you might not have an exception. And you'll see that there are hundreds of additional possibilities with regard to rules that you can set up, including disclaimers and so forth. Now, DLP policies, they're separate from rules and they fall under the compliance management feature as opposed to rules which fall under the mail flow feature. But ultimately, the DLP policies create rules, as you'll see in a moment. We might call them special transport rules, and their purpose is to check inside emails and classify information within as sensitive or non-sensitive in nature. And all of this is based on keywords, dictionaries, and known patterns for things like credit card numbers, social security numbers, and more. So let's not spend too much time talking about transport rules and DLP policies. Let's jump over to our server and let's get a close-up view of transport rules and DLP policies in action. All right, so we're on our Exchange server. We have the Exchange Admin Center already opened. And we're going to go to Mailflow and take a look at rules. So for starters, you can see we can hit the plus sign. We have no rules to start with but we can hit the plus sign to create a rule or we can click the little downward facing triangle to the right and note it gives us a few quick templates that we can choose from apply rights protection to messages apply disclaimers so we'll return to this in a moment we're going to start off with some blank rules to start apply rights protection to messages apply disclaimers and so forth so we'll come back to this in a moment let's start with a blank rule by clicking the plus sign so with our new rule we have to provide a name and what we're going to do is create a very simple rule that says all email that comes into the sales group which we currently have a shared mailbox set up for that sales group and it's at info at spytechprime.com we want to make sure that any email that comes into that group a copy gets sent to the VP of sales so we're going to call this sales incoming email copy to VP of sales. So here we have to provide the condition. So we're going to apply this rule if the recipient is, and here we'll scroll down and we'll choose sales and say OK. So if the recipient is that sales shared mailbox, then we're going to provide an action and we're going to say BCC the message to David Walker the VP of sales so we say okay 
And now David will get a copy of all email that is sent to that sales shared mailbox. Now you might say, well, what else can we do here? If we click more options, we can add additional conditions. We can add additional actions as well. And you can see that by selecting the add action, there are a greater number of different actions we can supply here. So what we saw originally was just a subset of the actions we could have utilized. In this case, we are BCCing the message to David Walker, but here we can do a lot more to it. And so that's what that extra button would do in terms of adding extra options. In addition, if we needed to establish exceptions, for example, if we knew that certain messages didn't need to go to David, we could click Add Exception, and then we can say what that exception would be. If the sender is a specific person, let's say, or if the subject or body includes certain words, then perhaps David wouldn't need a copy of that message. So depending on the type of rule that you're creating, there may be exceptions to that rule in order to ensure that the person now getting those emails doesn't get overwhelmed by emails they don't necessarily need. So if we look here, you can see some additional options as far as properties of this rule. You can choose to stop processing more rules. So sometimes multiple rules might apply. You can create additional transport rules and multiple rules might apply to the message but you can make it so that it stops processing additional rules. You can audit the rule with severity and you can choose a severity level. You can activate this rule on a certain date and deactivate the rule on a certain date. So again, more flexibility in terms of the rules themselves and what you can do with them. You can choose a mode for this rule so you can enforce the rule or you can test with notifications or test without notifications. So in our case, this is a great rule. We like it just as is, very simple. Any email coming into sales is going to BCC over to David Walker. That's all we need. And so it's important to keep that in mind, that just because you can be very creative and somewhat flamboyant when it comes to the use of your transport rules, and you can utilize multiple conditions and actions and exceptions here, the fact of the matter is taking the simple route is probably the best one when it comes to transport rules. We click Save. And here we can see the rule in our list view, and we can see the details over here on the right in the details pane. And so at any given point, we can go back and edit the rule, or we can delete the rule, and we can use up and down arrows when we have multiple rules to determine the rules that get applied first to any given message. Now going back to the little triangle here, if we select the down arrow, you notice that we could very quickly create certain rules. Some of these are very important, like apply disclaimers. We can click that, and you see that it sort of fills in some of the information for us, append the disclaimer, and then we can enter the text. This is great, and it's certainly easier, but we can do that ourselves if we need to. The nice thing is that some of these are a little more complex. For example, when it comes to generating an incident report when sensitive information is detected. Here if we select this option, we can see that this is a little bit more complex. Here it says, apply this rule if the message contains sensitive information. Well, what do we mean by sensitive information? Well, over here on the right, it says select sensitive information types. And so you can select this option, and then note if we click the plus sign, we get a whole list of different sensitive information types. So depending on the country you're in, we see Australia driver's license number, Canada, France, we can scroll down. Here we see US bank account number, US driver's license number, US social security number. So you might say, well, this is great. I can create a rule of this sort that filters this sensitive information. That's awesome. Where have I heard that before? Oh, that's right, data loss prevention. So we can manually create transport rules that focus in on this same information that we can utilize with data loss prevention rules. But notice how complex it is when we do it manually. Now that we've seen that, it will make the data loss prevention feature a whole lot better because you'll see how much easier it is. So if we go back up to compliance management and we go over to data loss prevention, notice here we can click the plus sign to create a new policy, or here we have a little triangle, and we can see 
New DLP Policy from Template, Import DLP Policy, or New Custom DLP Policy. So again, if we go with the New Custom DLP Policy, we're starting with the name of a policy and we'll have to go back in and choose the settings and it's pretty much the same as what we were working on before with our transport rules where we would have to establish the individual settings for that policy so that may be what we want but then again maybe it's not maybe we want this to be as simple as possible and so that's the value of using the DLP policy from template if we select that we can notice some of the options here so we can provide a name and a description and then here are all of the different templates on the left hand side if we look down at the United States we see we have the US Patriot Act we see we have US financial data by selecting that it gives us some information here on the right and here it says this helps detect the presence of information commonly considered to be financial information in United States including information like credit card account information and debit card numbers so we can appreciate that by utilizing this policy it can help to protect us from sending out information that would be considered sensitive if we scroll down you can see if we click more options we can choose a mode for the requirements in this DLP policy so we have the option to enforce the policy which basically enables the policy and so all actions that are specified in the policy will be carried out we can test the DLP policy with policy tips now we haven't configured a policy tip yet but we will in a moment and so if we had a policy tip configured basically what happens is the policy is enabled but the actions will not be executed what will happen is they will be logged into message tracking logs and so if we selected this the actions will not be taken it's just a test so it's a good way to test if the end users are getting the messages themselves but it's not going to enforce whatever we've chosen in terms of the actions and then test DLP policy without policy tips this tests the policy it logs the message but it doesn't actually display the policy tip to the user so let's say we wanted to actually utilize this specific policy we can call it US financial data click Save and here we can see that the policy mode is testing without policy tips if we select test with policy tips that brings us to the next question which is what are policy tips so over here you can see there's a little icon policy tip settings if we select that and we click the plus sign notice we can create or modify policy tip notice we can create or modify policy tip text and URL this information is displayed to the sender only if transport rules to notify with policy tips are configured we can notify the sender allow the sender to override block the message or link to a compliance URL you can see that the options change depending on what we've chosen so here if we choose to notify the sender we can choose a language to display in in this case we'll choose English and then we'll provide the text and we'll click Save and then close so now that we've created this DLP policy notice what happens if we go back over to our mail flow under rules you can see that there are all of these new rules that have been applied and you can see that each one of these is designed based upon the settings that we chose because we chose the US financial option and so here US financial allow override scan email sent outside low count and so here notice it says if the message is sent outside the organization and the message contains these sensitive information types credit card number or US bank account number or ABA routing number so here we can open this up and we can actually look and see what the policy just did now we saw how we could manually create these types of transport rules but we can see that by using the DLP policies it creates all of this for us so it does all of that extra work for us but then we can always go back and we can make adjustments right here you'll note that this one is test with notifications 
And so that's what happens when we choose that. It says this rule is a member of a policy in test mode. Actions will be audited. However, mail flow will not be affected. So this is really great that we have these DLP policies that very quickly and very easily provide us with all of these rules without our having to manually go in and to make the adjustments ourselves. Okay, so let's jump back over to our slides and let's review what we're going to do from a scenario perspective for SpyTech Prime. Let's see how we would utilize transport rules and DLP policies in a working environment. So for our scenario with SpyTech Prime, we're going to perform two tasks. The first is we're going to create a disclaimer that attaches to the end of outgoing emails that says the following, as you can see here, this long disclaimer. We're just going to cut and paste it into our disclaimer rule. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the Patriot Act template to create a DLP policy for our organization. And we'll make some adjustments to that policy in terms of the rules and how they apply, and then we'll test it out. Let's jump back over to our server and get to work. All right, so for starters, I emailed this disclaimer to myself from my train signal account so that I can just copy and paste it over to the transport rule. And so we're going to just copy this text right here. And this way I don't have to type that in all over again. And you'll note that the rules are missing, and that's because I deleted all of the rules as well as the DLP policy from what we were just working on. So we're starting with a clean slate. So we'll start back with rules. Now we could click the plus sign, and we could start from scratch and say apply this rule and look for disclaimers here. We could say more options and get more information. So we could say if we're going to send it to a recipient outside the organization, and we could choose outside the organization right here, say OK, and we could go through it that way. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the triangle here and click Apply Disclaimers. So we click Apply Disclaimers, we'll give it a name, Company Disclaimer. Notice it says Apply This Rule If, and we're going to choose the recipient is located so internally, there's no reason to append this disclaimer to the end of our messages. So it doesn't make sense to do it for both. So in this case, we're going to apply the disclaimer to those messages that are going outside the organization. So we leave it as that. We say OK. And then we're going to do the following append the disclaimer. Note that this is already chosen for us because we chose this option from the list when we selected the little triangle there. And so we have to enter text. We click that option, and here I can just paste in the text that I copied from the email message that I sent to myself. I say OK. There's the text. And then, and fall back to action, and then it says select one. We're going to leave it as wrap, and OK, if the disclaimer can't be inserted. We can add additional options if we'd like, but this is pretty much all we need for now. And so we click Save. And now that we have this transport rule for company disclaimer, let's perform a test of it by sending an email to a person outside the organization. So if we go back to our Outlook web app, and we can just send an email back to myself here at TrainSignal. That's pretty much all we need to say. We'll click send. And now that email has come into my inbox on my Outlook client for my train signal account. Let me open that up and I'll pull it over. And here we can see the email from administrator at SpyTech Prime to my email address at train signal. And you can see that the disclaimer was appended to that email that we just sent. So that's good news. It lets us know that our transport rule is working just fine, and this disclaimer will be appended to all emails that go to individuals outside the organization. This is one of those things that really needs to be taken care of automatically for individuals, rather than worrying about whether or not they apply it themselves, 
or attach it to their signature or something along those lines. So by being able to put it right within a transport rule, it just removes this as a concern for exchange administrators. Very easy to do. Okay, so that is the first part of our tasks to create this company disclaimer. The next part of our tasks is under compliance management, under data loss prevention. We're going to create a DLP policy that works off of the Patriot Act. If we scroll down, here's the U.S. Patriot Act. The name we'll give it is U.S. Patriot Act. The description is somewhat unnecessary, being that we know what we're creating the policy for, but we can provide a policy and say this is to ensure sensitive data is not sent outside the organization. We can scroll down, click More Options, and then we can enforce this, test the DLP policy with policy tips, or test DLP policy without policy tips. So in our case, we're going to enforce this and click Save. Now, just in case you're wondering why we decided to go with the Patriot Act, instead of perhaps one of the other ones. Well, here if we look in the various settings, if we look at the US financial data, the actual settings here relate to credit card numbers. They also relate to bank information. However, the Patriot Act, it relates to credit card numbers, tax identification numbers, and it also goes into things like social security numbers. So I wanted to lock down social security numbers for the organization and that's why we went with Patriot Act instead of going with the US financial data only. So that's the only reason. We talked about the financial data earlier and we demonstrated that but the Patriot Act has information regarding social security numbers. Now the way you can check to see what your policy actually has and what the settings are is to go back into the policy if we look under rules you can see the various rules that are actually associated with it and these rules are also located under mail flow under the rules that show us the different transport rules but you can actually make adjustments to them here or under the rules in mail flow and so if we look at the first one here the allow override this provides the ability to override the settings themselves and then here we have the scan email sent outside low count and then there's a high count these are interesting because the low count is a setting where if we actually go inside here and take a look, we can see it says the message contains sensitive information and then note all of the different features here. Credit card number, U.S. bank account number, U.S. individual taxpayer identification number, or U.S. social security number. And so this is basically everything that's under the U.S. Patriot Act policy. And so if an individual were to include any of this information, it would be flagged. And depending on the number of violations, it would be marked as a low count or a high count. So in this case, we're looking at the low count policy. If we select this, you can see that the minimum count is 1, the maximum count is 9. And so everything from 1 to 9 violations would still be considered a low count. And so, okay, we look at this and we say, that's great. What about the high count? Well, the high count would be from 10 forward. So if there were 10 violations or more, then it would be considered a high count. Now with the low count, notice it says notify the sender with a policy tip. And so we can create a policy tip and it will notify the sender, which these are similar to mail tips in that as they're sending the email through Outlook, it will give them this policy tip and say whatever it is we put in the message with regard to it perhaps being inappropriate for them to send this email. But notice the action. It notifies the sender but allows them to send. So this is not a deal breaker. They can actually send up to nine different violations but it will still allow them to send. It will simply notify them. You might say, oh no, 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 that's not going to work. We need for this to block it right away. And so we can make those changes here. We can actually block it right now. We can block the message. We can do a bunch of other things. We can also notify others, not just the sender. So we'll come back to this, not to worry. Let's just take a look at the high count. 
and notice if we reach the high count it blocks the message but it does allow the sender to override with a business justification and send and you might say oh no 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 that's not what we want at all in our organization we want it blocked and there is no override so again every organization is different and you can make adjustments to these policy settings in order to really bring it in line with what your organization prefers okay so we see all of these different settings let's do this let's make an adjustment here when it comes to the low count and let's adjust the settings here for the low count we won't change the number of violations we're going to send an email with one violation and instead of notifying the sender but allowing them to send let's change this and let's generate an incident report and we'll send it to the administrator we can include original content we can say include original mail or do not include original mail so in our case let's include the original mail we'll say OK and so now by adjusting this what's going to happen is if there's a violation if someone sends an email that's inappropriate that let's say includes a social security number or one of these other items then an administrator will get the report regarding this and this is just a good way to test that the policy is working and the rules are working so okay so let's click Save and we'll click Save again now the only other thing we might want to do is if we were going to use the policy tips we would want to make sure we have a policy tip put in this policy tip box here and so in this case notify the sender we would choose English and then say this email contains sensitive data and we can say this or we can add to this we can really say whatever we'd like and we click Save we can add additional items here we can have allow the sender to override block the message link to compliance URL so there's a couple of different options that we can choose from and then depending on what we've chosen and then depending on what we choose for the rule itself that is what will be replied back to them so if we have the rule say link to a compliance URL we can actually establish the URL here so that when they do stumble upon the mistake of sending a social security number and they do get a policy tip it will link back to the compliance URL depending on whatever setting we've chosen so there's a lot of flexibility here just like with transport rules in terms of how you set up your various DLP policies and that's because DLP policies are really based upon what we have with transport rules so as we said they're like special transport rules so we have all of the flexibility of transport rules but we have the templates in place that really are much better than what we had in times past because now we have the ability to lock down these different financial data credit card number social security number the sensitive data that we don't want to perhaps get outside the organization it's really a way to protect end users from themselves and from their own ignorance in terms of sending data like that in clear text through email that's always a mistake so this will help when it comes to enforcing those types of policies okay so now that we have this all in place we're going to close out of here and we're going to perform a test so what we'll do is we will log in as Tim Barry will send an email with a social security number to an individual outside the organization then we'll come back here and we'll check the administrators email and we'll see that he should get an email that says that Tim Barry tried to do this alright so here we are logged in as Tim Barry we go to our desktop and you can see we already have an email set up that is being sent to my email address outside of spy tech prime to trainsignal.com and we're sending a social security number clear as day so we click send and now let's jump back over to our exchange server and let's take a look at our administrators account through outlook web app we should see an email there from the system letting us know that Tim Barry sent an email that violated the rules and we just received an email it says from Tim Barry regarding the social security numbers if we click there we can see that it's not actually from him but it's really just a message letting us know that he did violate the US social security number data classification and we can see that there's a confidence level and so it gives us some information in this regard
So this is just one of the ways that we can react to circumstances like this. We can have messages sent to others to let us know that individuals are trying to send social security numbers, credit card information, and so forth. And again, you can see that there's a lot you can do with these data loss prevention policies. And not just with the policies themselves, but then from those policies, we can also create additional policies, new custom policies. We can tweak the rules. We can do it through the policy itself or through rules. We can go in and make adjustments to the rule settings themselves and enhance them or modify them in some way, add additional conditions, actions, and exceptions. So we're not locked in here. We have the ability to utilize all that transport rules have in terms of flexibility and apply them to this whole other avenue of protection that we never had before. So it's fun, it's new, and it's exciting. There's a lot more we can talk about with regard to these different rules and the different DLP settings. So I encourage you to do more research and more study, learn more about this, because as you can see, it's essential when it comes to compliance management for your organization. And so it will be essential for you to understand how this works in Exchange 2013. So we hope you found this informative. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.